magnetism labs. This again during the coronavirus, trying to do the labs that we would do in class, um, but so that we can that you can take a look at them at home. Okay, so it says first thing we need to do is determine the north and south of an un uh, unlabeled magnet. Um, so the way to do this, um, normally your compass. So here's a here's a good compass here, and in our classroom, it is actually pointing to the north pole of the Earth. Okay, uh, magnetic north. I won't go into that right now. Um, but if you'll notice this one right here, the red is not facing north. If that should be true in you, when you have a magnet, this is how you fix that. So I have a magnet here. You'll notice that it's attracted. I very quickly just run over the top of it. That should have fixed it because that's just a little piece of iron uh, or steel, I guess. If it were iron, it would be rusting. Well, I guess it could be oil. Uh, anyway, so that's now pointing in the right, right direction. So once again, we have a known compass pointing towards the North Pole. Um, it was actually not facing exactly because I've got some other magnets here. I've got to be very careful about that. All right, so there's North. Then um, if I take this, notice that's attracted to this side. So this side must be the South Pole, right? And if I flip it over, so South is attracted to a North Pole. Now to make this easier, I'll actually, so let's do this. So we say that this is, so south is, a, the red is a north, so this must be a north pole. Let's find out. Here's a known magnet. And notice the south is, a, the red is north, white is south, so this must be a north pole. Now I actually have a couple of magnets that are actually, that actually have some tape on them and stuff just because over the years. Now that should be a north pole. Okay, that should be a North Pole, so the white should be attracted to it. Okay, so that is correct. So now we've, we've figured out which way is north on our magnet. So then it says, it says, um, use your compass to determine, that we did that, label your magnet with a small piece of tape, we did that. On the graphic at the right, the circle re represents compasses. Uh, correctly draw arrows to show the way they point to either side of the magnet. So here's our north, and as per the that's going to be the north side here, and I'll put another compass on the other side. And notice that the compass points away, so we're going to have an arrow, and the arrow points, the arrow, the arrow of the arrow, so the pointy part of the arrow is north. So how do we draw that? What we're going to do is we're going to draw this. So it'll point away, because that's north-south, and it will point towards north-south. There we go. Okay. General properties of magnets, basic properties of magnets. Um, most people, I would say, one of the biggest misconceptions in, uh, well, let's just show it to you. My mistake. I almost told you before I showed it. Shame on you, Murray. Shame. So here we go. Um, look, I've got metals. Okay, a bunch of different things here. Let's see what happens when I take this magnet to all of these things. Okay. Well, okay, no one's surprised by that. Not attracted. Not attracted. That's obviously an aluminum can, and that's not attracted. Huh. So, and this, not attracted. So, oh, very attracted. So what is it that, I would say the number one misconception about magnets is that people say that magnets are attract attracted to metals. Well, nope. Some metals, yes, some metals, no. Well, let's go ahead and grab something that actually has some known, uh, known metals. So I've got this device here, which is known as a conductometer. It's actually for uh, heat. And it has, I'm not sure if you can read that or not. It's really hard to see. So I'm just going to have to point it out. Okay, so this is A for aluminum. Let's see what goes on there. Not attracted. B for brass. Not attracted. Uh, N for nickel. This is going to be a weird one later on. C for copper. No, and I think this one's steel. There you go. And as it turns out, things that have iron in them, steel, it, which has iron as its main component, is attracted to magnets. Now that nickel one I said was a weird one. Let me show you why. Here I have nickel. Does it actually show it there? There it goes. Nickel. Okay, get it close. Nickel. And it's attractive. I'll even take out a couple of the nickel balls here. Okay, I got this from the chemistry department. 
and they are attracted. I cannot tell you why some nickel is attracted and some isn't. I think it's probably it has to have a higher nickel content. The books say that uh, the only substances that are attracted to magnets is iron, nickel, and cobalt. I don't have any cobalt with me. But these nickel does, but if you take a nickel out of your pocket, it will not attract. Okay. Let's go ahead and answer these questions here. Are all metals attracted to magnets? No. Only iron. Well, I'm going to put nickel, even though I'm going to say pure nickel. I don't know. It has to have enough nickel. So, and then I'm going to write cobalt, even though this is a lab, supposedly. Okay. Um, now, again, the only reason I wrote that, I'm not saying that the book is wrong, but just that we don't have any experimental proof. I don't have cobalt to show that to you. When, use your two magnets to determine when they attract and when they repel each other. So I need norths and souths. So I have, um, okay, here's a north pole. And come on, do I have another north here? Make this easy, folks. That's fine. We're going to use this one, which I know is a known magnet. So that red side, hold on, let me go get it better. All right, so now I've got a bunch of them that have been pre, at the, red, the, the, the blue there is a north pole. Kids have done these over the years. So let's go ahead and show what goes on here with this. So if I take these, you'll find that if I put two norths together, here we go, ready? Put two norths together and they do that magic thing. There we go. Yeah, and then notice the souths come together. Um, can you imagine the first people that saw this? They had to have said that that was just magic. Repel because opposites repel and, sorry, opposites attract and like charges or like poles attract. Um, that would be repel, okay? So now let's put a couple of compasses together and see what they do. To do this, I'm gonna have to move my magnets away. So those are behind us quite a ways. And I will take one compass find one without bubbles in them so we have a compass one compass two coming in let me move that to where we can see better move these out of the way compass coming together coming together coming together there we go notice we have a north attracted to a south the south attracted to the north so we're going to draw the north went this way and it went like that because opposites attract and remember, this is a north-south, north-south. Now this one, I'm not sure if we can see this on the camera very well, but I'm gonna to try to put one on top of the other. So I'm gonna to have to take this out quickly. So notice the, the north is pointing that direction. Ready? Oh, see? Once again, there, you should have seen it. What happened was that they went opposite directions. First time it looked like this, and then like that. North, south, north, south, and another Y. No, 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 sorry. North, south, sorry. Um, the reds are norths and attract souths. Basically, you're finding out that these compasses are little magnets, okay? Now we're gonna put a paper clip and a magnet as shown. Let's see if I have a paper clip here real quickly. I do. Okay, so I have a paper clip and where's my magnets? So I'm gonna take this paper clip. I'm gonna put it to the south of the magnet. Okay, there's a south on the south of the, of the magnet. And let's see what happens. Let's see, over here maybe this one will be moving a little bit more, okay? So we have north-south, so this is a south. So notice that's that's a south and it's attracted to north. Notice I can move it and it attracts that north, right? So this steel is taking the same orientation as these magnets. Now here's the different part though, I can flip it around and it's still a south because it will align with this magnet, okay? Unlike this, if I take it and turn it around, it's a permanent magnet. This is a temporary magnet. It will take whatever magnetic field is around it. So if this is a north-south, then this is a north-south, and the compass will point towards it. So we drew that um, temporary magnet. Okay, let's see if we can do this, rubbing it with the magnet several times, see what we can do here, so. Yep, 
worked. We made a temporary magnet. Now if I do this, let's see what happens. A little bit. Sometimes it will shatter it back into place. Well, it won't work that way forever, but it works it's working right now. I actually have a couple things at the house where I'll take something apart at the house. Uh, I'm trying to remember what it was, uh, something off of a package, and all of a sudden it's magnetic. I found that kind of interesting. Okay. Um, so it says, if the paper clip is still magnetized, it will unmagnetize over time. And let me, oh, let me drop it on the ground. Quite a distance. See what happens there. Just a little, huh? I'm actually impressed by that. So, okay, so much for that demonstration. <clears throat> so, the other side here, the maglev, okay? Um, let me get that prepared. So real quickly, I talked about the maglev. I'm not gonna do all of the maglev stuff. There's another video online for that and I'm trying to do this quickly. So I have some donut magnets here, right? So north, south, I don't know what they are. So if I put this in like this, right, and I can take the top one. So let's imagine that's a north, then the bottom must be a south, and that must be a north or they wouldn't be attracted. So I turn it upside down, and now it repels, okay? And that's how maglev trains work, etc. okay? Now I could do this and go, you know, and reverse each one. Reverse one more here, and then let's just do a couple. There. There we go. And they compress each other because they do have, they have to exert a force. So notice they're less compressed up here than it is here. Now, something that you may not have seen before um, is I have some really s s large uh, donut magnets. As a student who had worked in uh, uh, medical uh, medical equipment, and he had these things which apparently they use for turning on and turning off um, uh, heart pacemakers. So if I take these, and I don't have the, quite the size that I wanted to, but we'll put that in there, grab a different one, and you get the same idea. Now you can see me pushing, I've got a couple more of them here. We'll stick them on there to see what we do. They're trying to flip over because I don't have this this is not the right size to keep them. So they're trying to flip over so that they'll be together. And if I compress them, again, notice they're slipping out of direction here. Yeah, they're, 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 not, they're not pushing off of each other because there's enough room here for them to slide. Okay, so some giant uh, magnets there in magnetic levitation. Okay. Now let's look at the magnetic field around magnets. Okay. This is your first configuration that you have. I mean, I don't have as many map compasses as you see there, but here's, so you can see it. There's the north facing that direction and the north facing that direction. Let's look at the compasses around it and I can kind of move the compasses so that you can see exactly what's going on. Since that's a north pole, the non-red, since most of them are white, but that one's black, the non-red is gonna to point to the north. Magnetic fields point the direction of a compass out of norths and into souths. Now here, because I have a north and a south, it's going to go that direction. Out of north, into south. And if we go all the way around here, you can see only when it's right on the edge there is it parallel. Because uh, magnetic fields are vectors and if, I, if we have equal magnetic field on both sides, equal magnetic force, it'll be balanced. I just barely get across that point and it will turn. Okay. Anyway, and if I turn these around, notice this one doesn't know what to do because it's right there on the balance point. If I get closer to one or the other, it flips. Okay. Uh, if I put two of them here, they would try to get away. Okay. And again, let's, let's go around the outside with this one. So we have uh, north pointing to south. South point to north, point to north, red, red, or the north point to south. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill in what we have here on our piece of paper. So, let me make sure it's centered here. So we have the north pole, so it's going to point away. Remember that we have the north 
sorry, south, north. The arrow is north, north, south. So it's gonna point away here, right in the edge. It's gonna point slightly away towards the south, towards the south, etc. But right in the center, away from the north, away from the north, okay? Here, it's gonna point away from the north, away from the north, away from the north, should have put one directly. If I was right here, it would go away from the north towards the south, okay? Towards the south, towards the south, towards the south, away from the north, okay? Now, these next two here, I have videos already <coughs> for the, the current, the, the magnetic field around a current carrying wire, the magnetic field around a solenoid. Go ahead and do those, okay?